and we're live. Welcome to West Side Girl Reacts. Hi guys, West Side Girl Kim here. That she is. And let's see, give us a couple of seconds or two before we go into our videos for today for our live late Labor Day special. Okay. Gotta blame you on this one. Because you were a teamster and of course you wanted Labor Day off. <laughs> Love being in the union. <laughs> We're both union members. <laughs> and I was off Labor Day also. Yeah, we both are. So we're going to listen to some songs about working and unions today. Okay. okay. And we're going to start off with uh, Dropkick Murphys. Never heard of them. They are a band out of Boston. And... They are, you can consider them, if there was no Pogues, there'd be no Dropkick Murphys. So they're kind of a Pogues clone. Okay. Influenced by them? Yeah, definitely. And you'll hear it. You'll see the instruments. A little bit uh, heavier than the Pogues. Not as melodic and a little bit heavier, like Boston hard rock sound. Mm -hmm. And if you ever seen the movie Leonardo DiCaprio, Jack Nicholson, it's about, it takes place in Boston. I think I know a movie you're talking about. Yeah, they I'm do a this. Fan of both. Yeah, they do a song called Shipping Up to Boston. So you probably heard it. Mm -hmm. At least you would recognize the riff from it, the little mandolin banjo riff. But this one, we're going to listen to the Workers Song. Okay. In honor of Workers. That's the name of it. That's the name of it, uh -huh. the Workers Song. Okay. Just the thing. And we will switch over and listen to Dropkick Murphy's The Workers Song. First thoughts. I like it. I right. love a song for the people. It is. And every time that they do something political, it's like, why are you going political? The whole point of Irish music is political. <laughs> oh, you're in favor of a union? Yeah. You don't like the Republicans <laughs> right to work states? No. Oh, man, I'm not a fan of you. Yeah, definitely not. No, I love the Murphys. You hear that Pogues influence? Do you hear the bit. bagpipes or the mm -hmm. Owen pipes? Just a little bit. Yeah. In the factories and mills, in the shipyards and mines, we've often been told to keep up with the times for our skills are not needed. This streamline the job. All right, and we're moving through it. We stop a little bit more live, and our one of our newer subscribers, Luddite Neanderthal, is here. Hi, nice to meet you. Thanks hey, for joining. Hey, Luddite, thanks again for joining and subscribing. And we're doing tributes to unions and workers today. <laughs> she was a Teamster. I'm a teacher's union member. That's the name of y'all union? Yeah, Chicago Teachers Union. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> See, we don't have something cool like the Teamsters and Jimmy Hoffa and, and all that. I think, and I'm trying to figure out who I was, who, whose union I was a part of for Teamsters for the um, CTA. The union was there. I thought CTA were Teamsters also. 
I gotta look that up. Yeah, I don't see them letting people drive without saying you're a teamster. I'm trying to figure it out. I don't don't remember them being teamsters, but they might have been. They might have been. All right, back to our song. You're liking it so far, though, right? Yeah, it um, it reminds me of like if a whole group of people were singing at one of the bars and just all singing along. Oh yeah, definitely, definitely. I love happy choruses that are all about death. <laughs> I had to do a copyright stop there anyways. <laughs> the first ones in line for that pie in the sky and we're always the last when the cram is shed off for the worker is working when the fat counts about where the first ones to stop. All right, the workers' song. That wasn't bad. I like that. It was OTR for a very anti-union company, and handbook wanted the retaliation for even saying the word. That, that sucks. That's what unions are for, man. Man, they try to get rid of you for any little thing. Yeah, I love that seeing Starbucks get uh, unionized, and mm-hmm. I think they got unionized actually when I was working for HMS Host. At the airport? Okay. This was Not a- all of them are, I mean, but I think each store is now, I, it's becoming more and more popular. Mm-hmm. I heard about that back then, though. <laughs> By the way, congrats. You are the first host to get the name right without stumbling. Or- Long story, I always call, I'm the tech person at work, so Luddite is a very common word I say around. <laughs> Everyone's a Luddite. And they don't know what it means, so they don't know if I'm insulting them or not. <laughs> the benefits of a large vocabulary and being a poor speller. Teacher. Yeah, but I'm a poor speller, so I had to expand my vocabulary oh, okay. to find words I couldn't spell. Well, that helps. Yeah, it does. And you were right. Thanks, sir. I was thinking about a meeting that I had to go to one time uh, while I was working. CTA's <laughs> they just have different um yeah they had different locals yeah, and different specialties locals. Yeah. yeah like my father-in-law was like 710 he wasn't a truck driver but he yeah. unloaded trucks mm-hmm. so yeah i didn't think anything turns wheels without it being part of the teamsters <laughs> especially in chicago yeah because the city when i was working for them they definitely are part of teamsters and they separate too from the laborers and the drivers right Okay, now we're going to go to, oh, let's get, uh, talk about the song. Talk about We did so much on the unions. Let's talk about the song. What thoughts, ratings? 
I liked it. It was a song for the people, and I could see it being song, uh, sung by a group of people out out and out and drinking together, just all having a good time. It just, it was a, the song was like a good, a good time, a nostalgic moment. It reminds you of, so I would give it a strong eight. Strong eight for the Dropkick Murphys for the first time. I think we could get a close to 10 out of her with the Murphys. <laughs> Especially when we play songs all F me and shit faced. <laughs> no, it's kiss me and shit faced. But it's about getting F. <laughs> and drinking. All right. We are now going to go across the pond to jolly old England, and we're going to listen to Mr. Billy Bragg. I was going to do There's Power in a Union, but I think for your introduction to Billy Bragg, I'm going to play you my favorite song. It's still all about workers and okay. stuff like that. It's still Billy Bragg is a English artist, like I said, mm -hmm. and he, I think he considers himself a straight up communist. He's very pro-labor, and okay. that's why I like him. Uh, Anti-authoritarian governments, all power to the people, but he's one of, hey, Sean, Sergeant Rock, how are you? Thanks for stopping by. Hey, Sean. And we got a uh, lot of Neanderthal through Sean's uh, Sergeant Rock's website. I was hey. away there plugging away as us, for usual. And now we're going to do Help Save the Youth of America. Billy Bragg, I was talking about, is another one of my underrated guitarists. Mm -hmm. He goes into concert with just his guitar and a small amp. Okay. He's got a very unique guitar sound that I like. And very good, very powerful. You're going to hear that there's the song is completely stripped down except for him and his guitar. Okay. And this is called Help Save the Youth of America. And it's by Billy Bragg. And he's very pro union. And I want it. This is my favorite Billy Bragg song. Okay. I should check it out then. And it's very timely, even though this was written back early 80s. <laughs> All right, so what are you thinking? It's giving. Let's hold hands in a circle and <laughs> kumbaya. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a bad song, though. It's, it's so good. Far, so good. I like that guitar sound of his. Yeah, it's really powerful. You can hear it. <laughs> and very interesting lyrics and very timely, too. Mm -hmm. Tell me the out -out story. Tell me the truth this time. Is the man in the mask or the Indian? Or let me your friend of mine. Help save the 
outside with boys in uniform and mothers and their frightful girls. What would the irony be of Billy Bragg copywriting me? A full-blown communist, everything to the people, and he's going to throw a copyright strike at our channel. Oh, so. <laughs> there think... will be some, but I don't think it's directly him. So. His record company, yeah, but him, I don't think yeah. so. So you still liking the song? It's all right so far. All right. I'm still going. Listen to the voice of the soldier down in the killing zone Talking about the cost of living and the price of bringing him home They're already shipping their body bags down below the Rio Grande But you can fight for democracy at home and not in some foreign land And the fight of the right United States is entwined the fight of the soul the incident at Genova proves that where we're living is very small. And the cities of Europe have burned before, and they might yet burn again. And if I do, I hope you understand that Washington will burn with them. Omaha will burn with them. Los Alamos will burn with them. There's a cheerful, depressing song. Everything will burn with them. It wasn't a bad song. It was a nice mellow about song. Um, definitely a people song. Realistic to the past and the present, for sure. So, yeah, it was okay. Okay. And it wasn't as upbeat as the last one, but it was it was a good song. It no, it, it stripped down. Get, yeah. I think I've heard the Murphys perform this song, and they oh, do a powerful job on it, yeah. And so we're going to rate this one, Mr. Billy Bragg, our first time listening to him. A seven. A seven? I'll, I'll take a seven for That's Billy Bragg. Song. Yeah. I meant it. It's a different. He's got an interesting voice. I like he sings in his accent. He doesn't yeah. go to the American accent when singing. Mm -hmm. And we got going on in our chat. Let's do an Arlen. No, no, I'm kidding. Like the over uh, the ten inch speakers. Okay, yeah, Sean's explaining, or no, that's what I. Uh, he's got an overdrive through a ten inch speaker scoped onto his axe, his guitar. Oh, right. So that's how he performs. Like I said, I appreciate music. I know nothing about it. I do know REM plays arpeggios. Don't know what that means though. <laughs> Words, and speaking of R.E.M., we're going to go to R.E.M. You we heard the one song by them, Superman. And that was their bass player, Mike Mills, singing it. This time we're going to get their lead singer, Michael Stipe. And we're going to listen off one of my Desert Island albums. You know what Desert Island album is, right? Going to an, uh, an island, you get to bring five albums with you. What five albums are you going to bring? Me? you asking me that? I'm asking you that. I'll tell you mine. In the chat, Sean and Luddite, oh, what, what, are your, a... what are your five albums for Desert Island? Okay, we'll come back to that. We'll come back to that. Because you know what? Actually, next week I was going to, it was going to be this week. I was going to mm -hmm. tell you Monday I wanted you to pick the songs where I'm going to react to. Okay. But I'll give you a week to come up with two or three <laughs> songs to react to. Okay. We'll record those. We won't. Well, we could do them live too. So let's see what if our chat has anything for their Desert Island albums. Scope is a minimize mids and bar. Oh, yeah. I, you said all great words there, Luddite, but I'm a Luddite when it comes to guitars. I, and, I, and I'm a sound guy, too. But that, that, you're, you're talking way above me. <laughs> <laughs> and so my Desert Island albums would be Jethro Tull, Bursting Out, which we... <laughs> Uh, REM document. Okay. The Pogues, If I Should Fall from Grace with God. Pink Floyd, The Wall. We'll get to some of that in Prague, November. Okay. And then we go into Grunge, January. 
Orange. Green January. Green January. January. I'm making it up as I go. Uh, some stuff up. Well, I didn't make up Prague Vember or Rocktober because next month we're gonna blow out the eardrums. Oh. Some heavy metal monster sounds. Okay, I think I, I think I got one. Five. Okay, your five albums. I'm gonna switch, but for right now, uh, I'm gonna go with. Gotta carry me some gospel. CC Wine is throne room. Okay. Um, R&B definitely gonna have Tanks, um, Sex, Love, and Pain two album. Um, Summer Walkers still over it album. Um, Omarion's old album and Marcus Houston his. What is the name of this album? I'm sorry, guys. Give me a second. I don't think any three of us here are gonna know no, if you got the album a, name wrong. No. <laughs> Oh. Veteran. Okay. Yes, those are who are going with me. All right. And my number one album that I said, All from Grace with God. And I think I would go with The Who's. Mm, who's Next? Which we've listened to Bob O'Reilly from, or Won't Get Pulled Again. So you've heard all songs from all my albums mm -hmm. that are my Desert Island albums, except The Wall. And we will get to Pink Floyd. Okay. All right. My five inch stick. Oh, his five. Sticky Fingers by the Rolling Stones. Oh. I would substitute Let It Bleed. But that's me. The Banana Album, Velvet Underground. That's not a bad one. Disraeli Gears by Cream. So all stuff we're going to get to. Uh, Sergeant Rock, Pink Floyd, Animals. Jethro Tull, Heavy Horses. Yes, we haven't heard yet. Motorhead is definitely going to be in november okay. we're gonna play songs about the devil for you lots of songs <laughs> he'll be mentioned in a few songs right <laughs> and quadrophenia by the who okay that's a choice and little feet waiting on columbus little i like little feet i'll ban i forget about remind me about Remind us about Little Feet when we're looking for songs, because that's always good. Quadrophenia by The Who, that her second rock opera. Tommy, and he could live with Let It Bleed. All right, live. All right, now we're going to go into R.E.M., finest work song. Okay. R.E.M., a band from Athens, Georgia. Again, a very pro-worker, very pro-socialist type band, very politically active. And so we're back in the States. We're back in the States, back in the good old Georgia. Athens, Georgia, that is. And this has everything about REM, the jangling guitar, the arpeggios, and a big drum sound. Okay. And we're going to hit it now. First thoughts. When I when I hear um, the last songs that we have played, including this one, it just reminds me of how like I think that they use these as intros uh, for a lot of ninety TV shows. Okay, uh, I just hear that the influence on a lot of those soundtracks. Yeah, you, they borrowed from it because yeah, they couldn't afford the royalties and stuff like that. But yeah, definitely. And this is that REM jangly guitar, which I just fell in love with. I heard. This is the first song on the album, mm -hmm. like my first big exposure to R.E.M. I think I bought this album because I saw a couple videos by them. These guys are cool. And this album came out. I dropped the needle on the vinyl, and I swear I moved three feet back just <laughs> with that guitar sound, and I was hooked. I've never heard guitar like that before, <laughs> and it was like, wow. Okay. And this whole album is just phenomenal. 
and I love Michael Stipe's voice. And then you're going to hear Mike Mills come in and a little bit of the chorus, a little higher voice. Mm -hmm. You heard him sing Superman mm -hmm. and how perfect I, their voices match. Mm -hmm. And continuing on, Finest Work Song. <laughs> I'm going to yell at Sean. Not a big fan of REM. <laughs> How can you not be, Sean? Oh, wow. You're a Sorry, union so guy, I'm too, and a social, very strong liberal. God, I thought Michael Stipe would be in your wheelhouse. Don't make me Arwen you, Sean. <laughs> I love you too much. And we're back to the song. Sean will come around. He'll, he has to tune into all our REM stuff. Instinct by the rain, you better best to rearrange what we want and what we need. Is been confused, been confused. Finest work song, R.E.M., off their finest album, Document. I like that. That one good. Especially the break, well, you call them breakdowns, but when you just heard the... Um, the bridges and... Yeah. Mm -hmm. the, and the end. I like I like that. It sounded really good. That driving drum through this whole thing. Yeah, it pulls you in. It definitely does. Mm -hmm. And then that Mike Mills voice with the screaming kind of in the background, seeing that little bit of chorus, working hard. You know, like that makes sense. I mean, it wasn't something that really stood out to me, but okay. definitely. Um, you know, it probably didn't for me until I got into the band and started to appreciate his singing. We were here more often and just hearing these different bands, I definitely can see how you are a fan of. Yeah, that work. That's good. They really do good work. They do. Mm -hmm. And Canadian Reacts is here now. Well, thank you for stopping by. Thanks for jo joining and tuning in. Uh, uh, REM Sleep. Yeah, see, my REM love stops after Automatic for the People. So that's the uh, album? They, yeah. 
they started out in Athens and they said, we're always going to be this four piece. Mm -hmm. And the drummer ended up leaving in the late nineties. Right. And they always said they were going to break up and then their music went a completely different way. It went away from this jangly guitar to this real melodic sound. Uh, did you ever see the Andy Kaufman movie, Man in the Moon? No. I've oh, heard of it, okay. Uh, Man in the Moon is a song R.E.M. wrote about Andy Kaufman. And okay. so I was just trying to think of another movie that you've heard their song in. And you've probably heard It's the End of the World as we know it, and I feel fine. That definitely sounds, that sounds like a lyric in song. That's the whole name and the Yeah, I've the definitely song. heard that. I think if you played like Guitar Hero, it's on there. I play Guitar Hero. Okay. But you know what? This song sounds like it belongs on Sons of Anarchy. <laughs> it sounds like it belongs on. That's all I could think of when I was hearing it. Like, this was definitely be on a soundtrack. Yeah, this is a good, it's a good song working to you. Get that working feeling to it. And so let's rate this R.E.M. song. I'm going to give them a seven, too. Another seven. So we had an eight and two sevens today. Dropkick Murphy's with our highest rating. Yes, yes, yes. And you know what? It is live, and I just saw on my Facebook, I'm not going to do a whole reaction to it, but uh, Gary Weaver died. Uh, am I saying that right? Let me see. Who is that? He had one popular song. I, I know they've used it for... Uh, our uh R and B stuff. Okay. Gary Wright. Dream Weaver by Gary Wright, not Gary Weaver Dream Wright. You just totally lost that. <laughs> yeah, I did. <laughs> he just died. So and since this is fresh, I mean he, these guys are all old. It's the thing about growing up and getting old. <laughs> but this you couldn't go anywhere in the seventies without hearing Dream Weaver. So we're just going to listen to a little bit of Dreamweaver up to the first chorus okay. and see if you heard it or what you think of it. It's our... Rest in peace, Gary. This is why we need headphones. Because mm -hmm. listening to this in the 70s, going back and forth in your headphones, I mean, this is trippy stuff. <laughs> I have just closed my eyes again. Climbed aboard the dream weaver train Trying to take away my worries of today And leave tomorrow behind Ooh, dream weaver I believe you can get me through the night All right, Gary Wright, so good. as my brother convinced me when I was little that this song was called Jim Weaver, and Ooh. it was about a guy you went to high school with. <laughs> you feel that? I was How long eight. did it take you to realize he was pulling the wool up yeah. yeah, Maybe 30, 40 years. <laughs> lyrics videos on misheard lyrics. Oh, that's me. No. <laughs> But anyways, uh, rest in peace, Gary. Now you had to hear that chorus on something. It was yeah. very popular. When chorus. I heard me, when I first heard it starting to play, I'm like, yeah, I definitely heard that. Yeah, before. yeah, I know it's I've heard. Definitely been sampled. All right, so that's gonna wrap up our live for today. This is a record for us. We have four or five here. I appreciate that. I appreciate no, all you guys. Had more before. For a premiere, 
Oh, yeah, we did. We did. When Franks and Frogs yeah. showed up one time. Yeah, yeah. Okay, correct me. Always. Anyways, uh, thanks for tuning in. We're going to record some other reactions. Definitely uh, doing a Jimmy Buffett song. Rest in peace, Jimmy Buffett. Rest in peace to him. And we thank all of you for coming out and joining. Carrie. Oh, Carrie Ann Chrysler's here. Wayne and Wayne's World. With Hi. Scenic. Oh, yeah, that's right. If you see, She's not. Did you ever see Wayne's World? That's a TV show. The movie Wayne's World. It was a SNL no. skit, Saturday Night Live skit. Mm -mm. Okay, she's not big on comedies. I wanted to no, do. I'm not. Yeah, <laughs> I was wanted to do a Blazing Saddles reaction with her. Somebody was asking how you avoid copyright. Uh, how do I? Oh, I tested it. You get about about ninety seconds before they throw up that uh, copyright flag uh, and stop your live stream. But it play your, when we go live, I stop the music three or four times to get through it without copyrighted. And then after I publish this, I'll have to do the appeal and then it goes to the channel anyways. But yeah, as long as you don't stream for like four, the full four minute song, mm -hmm. you should be okay. You just got to break it up more and let the algorithm catch you back up. So that's my advice, uh, Canadian. So if you want to do a live with music, you just got to break it up more. And then everyone complains you talk too much. It's a reaction channel. <laughs> right. That's the whole point. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Wayne's World and Carrie says, you may enjoy that one. It's a good one. It's a Chicago-based one. It made uh, Queen popular again, I believe. I mean, Queen was always popular, but it made right. Bohemian Rhapsody the song again mm, okay. from that movie. So, but yeah, thank you everybody for stopping by. Can. We're on our way to 500 subscribers. And so share the shit out of our show. Like, comment, share, and subscribe. Alice Cooper. Tell a friend to tell a friend. Definitely around for Halloween. And we're going to do accordion for you today. Carrie, I believe you were asking about accordions and songs. So we're going to do a song with an accordion. Okay. Dropkick Murphy's use accordion too. A little bit here sometimes. But it's not an all no, it, it was all oom pipes. But anyways, thank you for stopping by. We do appreciate, and we're going to try to go live next Wednesday again. All things going well, I think. Mm -hmm. But we do love you guys and respect Until the hell out of you. Peace. Peace and power to the worker. <laughs>